sure if anyone can hear me on this. Okay, good. <laughs> we'll get started in a sec. Hi there. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we're actually live from my little room here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we're actually out in the field um, um, in a, on a game reserve called uh, Mala Mala in South Africa. Um, but yeah, so um, funny enough, uh, being out in the wilderness, I've actually got better internet signal than I do back home. Um, so hello everyone and i uh, hope you guys are doing well um yeah so i'm gonna try and figure out where to start um and uh yeah i'll just be going through your your comments along the way um yeah so i am uh, my name is russell mclaughlin i'm a wildlife cameraman uh based in south africa and i, I grew up in south africa so this is uh I'm actually not too far away from where I'm right now, so um, yeah, it's uh, kind of like home, and uh, yeah. Um, but uh, in saying that, uh, um, I'd say the last year has been really nice for me because uh, I've actually been doing work close to home, and uh, whereas most of my work prior to that um, spent. Uh, um, a long time in India uh, documenting uh, a, a black black leopard. Uh, most people know it's a black panther, but uh, yeah, it's just a genetic mutation. So yeah, uh, please go ahead. Uh, questions, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my eye on that and I will we'll keep on talking to you guys along the way. Hey, Louis. <laughs> nice to see Louis on, yeah? Um, yeah, Wakanda forever. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, so, yeah, um, quite a few years back, we set out on a project in, in India, and uh, uh, we were um, documenting this uh, black leopard that we... we probably spent just under two years following. Um, it was quite quite an experience and, you know, growing up out in the side of the world where you, you know, especially on this this reserve that I'm on now, uh, it's got a high density of leopards. And uh, when uh, when we were out there, um, just being in a, in, in, in a jungle and uh, just that forest being so dense, finding anything out there was just so magical. Um, definitely one of the most surreal places I've ever, uh, sorry, uh, just reading one of the comments. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to think that I'd specialize in big cats, but I, I've, you know, I've done all, all kinds from, you know, elephants to crocodiles to, uh, polar bears, um, you know, various, various species, um, to birds. Um, yeah, so frogs, reptiles, snakes, uh, but I, I like, I don't, I don't know, this is something about big cats that I just love, and um, yeah, it's, um, I think it's, uh, I don't know, there's just something so magical and powerful about them. Uh, how do you go about getting your first red camera? Oh my word, okay. Uh, a lot of that was, um, uh, you know, saving up 
freelance work after freelance work and eventually saving up and then uh, uh, pulled the trigger on one. Um, and it was like one of the, you know, the bottom end, you know, entry level ones. And uh, um, it wasn't long before that was paid off. And and then I, I did the upgrade leap on it. And uh, ever since then was, uh, um, you know, the rest was history. So, um, you know, I've got good returns on, on, on rentals out in the field and shoots. So it just uh, paid for itself very quickly. Um, so I hope, I hope that makes sense. Okay. Is, uh, Mike Dixon is wildlife in South Africa being protected and is ecotourism becoming popular? Well, right now during the whole, um, uh, pandemic, um, wildlife uh, ecotourism tourism is on a complete standstill we've got this entire reserve exclusively for ourselves to work in which is unheard of um there's just no there's zero tourism so it's uh it's very sad um but uh um at the same time the guys on the ground here are, are out every day still doing the anti-poaching work uh, they still um they're still protecting the wildlife out here. Uh, it's quite amazing. Uh, you know, last night, coming back from dinner, the guys were prepping to go out into the field, uh, the anti-poaching teams. So the guys are still, even though tourism is non-existent at the moment, the guys are still working really hard, um, especially you know with ongoing poaching with rhinos and, and elephants and things like that. The guys definitely are making a huge impact on that out here. And we're seeing it even out in the field whilst we're filming every day. We, we are bumping into the guys um so um tom another uh a, a good question uh tom land uh with no tourism has the poaching uh got noticed to be worse uh yes and no um so bushmeat poaching has has definitely got worse uh um so it's i i would 100 percent say it's 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 got worse uh i'd like not not insanely like like over the top, uh, but where it's with a larger game like um, uh, rhino and elephant, that that definitely has been on on a on a dip from this side. Uh, just because here in South Africa, I think you know other countries could be far worse affected, but here in South Africa, uh, because of the whole um, COVID nineteen and lockdown that everyone's been on, every road there's police and military and there's just huge monitoring going on so you know that's uh poach products out of the country so i don't know if that makes sense to you guys but uh it definitely has been something that we've seen on the ground here uh just because there's just so many eyes you know because of lockdown there's there's a few vehicles uh, driving they're going to stop you and and check i mean i got i got just on the way to the reserve here i got stopped over a few times um just to see you know where i'm going what's going on um yeah so i hope that makes a bit of sense uh then uh mallory asks uh, what's been uh your most challenging project uh um one of uh, i would probably say working in india and in the forests of india uh, just because of how dense it was um uh that particular forest um we would, we went with one stage, I think it was something like eight weeks that we couldn't find our, our subject that we were filming, which was the black leopard. And uh, after eight weeks of not finding an animal, uh, you, you're kind of giving up. Um, and then we found him and his face was split into two and he got into a big territorial fight and it looked like the end of him and he disappeared for another four or five weeks and we we're like, okay, no, this cat's, this cat's tickets, he's dead. And uh, he popped up one day and he was all, looked like uh, he just went on holiday and got stitched up and came back uh, a better cat. So um, it was def definitely really rewarding, um, you know, with, with that. Um, but then um, we were busy with a, a lion film in South Africa in, in the Kruger National Park. Uh, and we were from Black Leopards to documenting white lions. And there's the coalition of five males that we've been following. There's a white male in that coalition. And it's a very rare genetic trait that you get in these animals um, where, just to give you an idea, 
there is only three free roaming wild white lions in the whole of Africa. And we're following those three. Two are young cubs in a pride, and then there's one uh, male, uh, adult male in a in a coalition of, of five males. Um, and he is insanely difficult because he's at that stage of his life where they haven't went here park into Mozambique. So when he goes into Mozambique, we have no idea where he is. And and the place where he is in, in, in the Kruger National Park, there's just so little access. So it's 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 not easy. It's really, really tough. Um, and by the time we finish the film, it'll probably be going on to about three and a half to four years um, out, out following this cat. That's pretty damn difficult, I won't lie. Um, uh, then there was a question from Millie on Instagram. Have you filmed any UK wildlife before? Uh, that's a negative. I uh, haven't filmed any UK wildlife yet. Just see if I've missed any questions here. Okay, so if you guys have got any more questions, go ahead and uh, just drop it through to me. Oh, uh, the freshwater seals. Um, yes, that actually came out. Uh, there was a, a documentary we did with uh, on Scandinavia for National Geographic. Um, um, Mallory, the, there's a show called, I think it's Nordic Wild or Wild Nordic. I, I can't remember. It's one of the two. Um, the series uh, on Nat Geo Wild. I don't know if it's aired in the States yet, but uh, it, it one of the episodes features the the Sina Seal from uh, Lake and Day of uh, working out in the field there. I got frostbite, um, uh, which wasn't pleasant. I, I, I don't ever recommend that. Um, yeah, so Tom, you're asking how well are the lions doing at the moment? Uh, what are the largest threats? Well, um, I think they're each other. Um, this morning we witnessed a huge territorial fight uh, where the one pride had picked off a female from another pride and uh, it looked like they nearly killed her. Uh, it was quite a, a rough sighting that we had. Um, so during this, this, this time, um, I, you know, I think they they're probably their own worst nightmares, um, but that's you know every every day is like that. Um, I've noticed you know the I thought the, the animals would be a lot more skittish and you know coming back in into the field at um, after because South Africa had a six week seven week lock full lockdown and then we've been able to get out into the field because of our media uh, passes. They've kind of uh, allowed if you live in location you can go back out into the field um and yeah so it was uh it was a pretty crazy sight we had this morning but then um what i've noticed with the animals uh they uh, um yeah they've, they've kind of been pretty chilled um <laughs> just trying to read all your questions at the same time. Um, yeah, okay. So I would say right now the lions' biggest threats are, are, are each other. Uh, just there's just a huge number of prides of lions in this area, um, all over, and uh, just you know with with limited territory space, uh, I think they're their own worst nightmares. Um, and then okay, so the lions are doing very well at the moment. Um, Simon, how, how are you doing? Um, what's your most used lens? Uh, my most used lens right now at the moment is a 120 to 300 millimeter lens. I, I've just It's just a, a favorite lens of mine. And uh, just because we can work in such close proximity of these animals, it's uh, and it's just got such a beautiful depth of field. It's definitely been the lens that I've been working with the most. It's actually the lens I'm working with right now. Uh, we've got bigger lenses here, but uh, I just there's just something about uh, depth of field. So um, I prefer that over anything else. Um, Tom, again, uh, also because I can't resist. What's your closest call being with an animal? Uh, I've uh, I've had a. Uh, uh, 
pretty bad incident with a leopard many years ago, about 10 years ago, uh, where I ended up having both my knees operated on. It uh, wasn't pleasant, um, but I ended up cornering a, a leopard in, in uh, up on the side of a mountain in Namibia, and uh, I ended up uh, running away from it, and I took a jump and tumbled down a cliffside, and uh, a few days later, I was back in South Africa, had my knees operated on, uh, but we ended up going back and, you know, following and tracking the same leopard again. Um, I think uh, that's why <laughs> I respect them so much. Um, and um, yeah, they, yeah, it's uh, another one I've, I've, I've had uh, a pretty, pretty close call with, uh, with a buffalo before. I've, I had it run over me. Um, uh, luckily I tripped and when I tripped the buffalo just cleaned, just went straight over me and carried on running. So I was I was very lucky, but uh, like uh, it was it was funny at the time. Um, but uh, yeah, I, it's it's just put a whole new light um, and way I look at buffalo these days. Uh, so yeah, and you do get complacent, and that was a very complacent moment with me. And uh, I've learned from that. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, hopefully it never happens again because it was it was way too close. Um, Next question. Uh, okay, so what do you do uh, for the six to eight uh, weeks whilst you're waiting for animals to appear? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, so luckily uh, in the forest, uh, there were other people building the show around, so we spent time following other leopards in the forest. Um, and then uh, there was a lot of tiger activity in the forest as well. So. Um, we created the story, you know, with the tigers, the leopards, the Asiatic wild dogs, the elephants, uh, everything that lived in the forest. So, yeah, it all tied in together. But then our, 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 our core, um, you know, story was 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 the black leopard that we were following. And uh, um, I, I mean, I, I won't lie, I was pretty stressed out at the time. I I, I, I thought uh, he'd been taken out by a tiger or, or you know something had happened. Um, but uh, yeah, he turned up and uh, it's a huge relief, but uh, yeah, so so to answer that, um, uh, we just you know, we would stick in where we knew he was, where his territory was, because we established his territory at a very early stage. And once we, we knew where his territory was, a big male leopard like that would you know always use that, um, you know, these these roots, so uh. Yeah, it, it, we also and there's also other animals, uh, other you know, tigers in the area, uh, other leopards in the area. So we we focus all our attention, you know, whilst whilst we searching for them, and and we see tigers or elephants or, or other leopards, and you know we, we'll spend some time filming with them, and then just build the story and uh, together. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, another one from Instagram. Do you have tips for those uh, wanting to get into wildlife? Filming industry, uh, yeah. You know, if you if you're passionate from uh, you know with wildlife and for wildlife, it's it's definitely that's definitely a start. Uh, you gotta love it. Uh, you gotta um, you know be prepared to you know stay in you know terrible accommodation and like little tents and you know you know really break a sweat out in the field. Your hours aren't normal. It's not a nine to five job. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it can, it, um, if, if you really love working with wildlife, none of that will matter to you. So it's, it's, uh, it's, and then when, when you get to see your end product, um, it's, it, it's incredibly rewarding. Um, you know, every day I'm out with these lines that we're following, it's just, just always leaves me smiling. So, uh, it doesn't matter how long the days are and how hot they get. So, yeah. Um, just, I think passion, um, you know, for wildlife uh, is probably the most important tip I can give you. Any more? So in about uh, five minutes, I will have to be heading back out into uh, the wilderness. Um, Yes, I'm going back out this afternoon to go film some lines. Uh, 
uh, we're actually going to start looking for leopards and then move on because we know where the lions are. Um, we're we're going to start looking for leopards and then move on on to to the lions um, um, and end the day off with the lions. So yeah, exciting um, and it's I won't lie, it's it's, it's really good to to be back uh, out in the field um, after we had our lockdown for six weeks. Uh, I think it was the longest I've spent at home in, in five years. So uh, I, I was actually, to be honest with you, I was kind of enjoying the lockdown, but uh, I'm also happy to be back out in the wilderness as well. Um, this is just like another extension of my lockdown because uh, we'll be here, f you know, for the next four to six weeks. And uh, before I go, if there's any more questions, do uh, do ask them. Okay, I think that's all good for now. Well, it's been lovely uh, chatting to everyone, and. Uh, yeah, if you um, you know if you, if you follow some of the work, you might see uh, some of the lines that I've been talking about. I posted a couple of little videos of them today. Um, yeah. So, uh, oh, um, after the lines, uh, funny enough, uh, a lot of a lot of projects I'm doing this year are actually online. So it's like lines, lines, lines. Um, so, yeah, um, I I actually want to stay a bit closer to home as well. Uh, after all this time traveling. So, yeah, um, it's lines again. Lines and lines and lines. But anyways, uh, thanks thanks for uh, tuning in, everyone. And uh, we'll stay in touch. And, uh, yeah, you can see what I was talking about earlier. Um, ciao for now. Bye.